Are you sure? Here's the 30 second lesson on what legends know. Never ask a bride why she's getting married. Don't wear a skirt on a windy day. Deodorant is not a shower. Don't sniff chili flakes. <laughs> and don't forget, saving is not investing. Legends don't just save, they invest in mutual funds. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme related documents carefully. I understand that an expression like or a metaphor like the day after is a bit tricky to use when it comes to analyzing or looking forward to national politics a day after the consecration of the temple in Ayodhya. However, the day after, I know it's a it's a negative metaphor because of the movie, but it's also where a big event like this, this takes place. A big news news story like this unfolds. After that, there is fallout, right? Fallout can be good, bad, whatever, but there is fallout. So that fallout is what we are talking about. What happens after this? Now, there are supporters of the BJP who think that, oh, fantastic. There is the whole country is Ram Mai because Lord Ram is the is the most unanimously popular god among particularly among Hindus across the country and Modi government will get more than brownie points brownie points in politics is votes for making this possible that first of all all right you might not give them the credit for having a, an order from the supreme court but for building the temple so quickly that's why quite, quite remarkable in india and also in the manner that the ceremony was carried out in the manner in which the event was managed and it was projected all of that would make an impact so supporters of modi government or fans of the bjp now think oh wow this means 300 will go to 400 or if not 400 350 or more than that the opposition, on the other hand, is also rethinking its positions because opposition now has a problem. The problem is that it is impossible for them, or at least it's it's not wise for them, it's unwise for them to set this up now, set this contest up again as secularism versus communalism. Or to say that or the BJP government led by Narendra Modi is a Hindu communalist government because if they say that, if they do that, then you immediately run into the idea of the temple that Modi government is being accused of being communal because they built the temple and because they seem to demolish all partitions between, between the state, between the government and religion, the Hindu religion. That's a reality, but that is not how it will play out in elections because elections are not like a college debate. These are elections. People go in with their emotions. They go in to vote. So what does the, what does the opposition do? Uh, three opposition parties we have seen, all constituents of the India bloc, they found some clarity. The left, for example, that's easy to understand. Pinarai Vijayan has spoken out and he has said that the church and the state should always be separate. My words, not his. He said that in our secular system, the state and the, and the religion should be kept very clinically apart. There should be Chinese walls. Again, again, my line, not his, between the state and religion and, and the BJP has mixed it up. So he has taken a very clear position. But you know what? He doesn't run into the BJP anywhere. His challenge is not the BJP anywhere. In Kerala, his challenge is the Congress party, which is his own India bloc ally. So, so, so he does not have a problem running into the BJP on the issue of communalism versus secularism. That's one. The second is DMK. Once again, Udanidhi Stalin has said that, you know, how can you celebrate the construction of a temple that was built on the ruins? after demolishing a mosque and he said he said we can't celebrate it once again for him at least for now bjp is not an ally because in the best of time bjp bjp would win one seat in tamil nadu they are expecting to do better this time but now they don't even have aia dmk as their ally so i don't know in 2014 they had won one seat in kanyakumari 2019, in spite of a larger sweep by the BJP, by Narendra Modi's uh, BJP, they did not win a single seat. So he can also take a clearer position. It's a bit more complex for Mamta Banerjee in West Bengal because for her, the BJP has now become the main rival, both in Lok Sabha as well as Vedhan Sabha. That's because, that's because the left has declined almost completely. So the left's vote some of it has gone to Mamta Banerjee. In fact, a 
लार्ज अमाउंट इज गॉन टू ममता बैनर्जी एंड बट क्वाइट ए बिट इज गॉन टू द बीजेपी एज वेल एंड सिमिलरली द कांग्रेस पार्टी इज लॉस्ट मोस्ट ऑफ इट्स वोट एंड दैट टू इज गॉट डिवाइडेड सो बीजेपी इज गॉट ए बंच ऑफ वोट बीजेपी इन वेस्ट बेंगाल बीजेपी इज हर मेन चैलेंजर सो वॉट इज शी डन शी इज ऑल्सो चेरी ऑफ लेटिंग दिस बिकम हिंदू वर्सेज द रेस्ट हिंदुत्व वर्सेज द रेस्ट और डेफिनेटली नॉट लॉर्ड राम वर्सेज डी टी एम सी और लॉर्ड राम वर्सेज टी एम सी इज आइडिया ऑफ सेक्युलरिज्म सो वॉट हैज शी डन शी ऑन द सेम डे ऑन द डे ऑफ द कॉन्सिक्रेशन ऑफ द टेम्पल वी मैंशन दिस इन आर इन आर इन आर कंटक लेटर एपिसोड वेयर डी के सिंह आर पोलिटिकल एडिटर ऑल्सो ऑल्सो पार्टनर विद मी वी वी टुक नोट ऑफ इट देन ऑल्सो दैट शी वेंट टू द प्लेसेस ऑफ वर्शिप ऑफ वेरियस फेथ्स दैट इज मंदिर मस्जिद मॉस्क चर्च एंड सो ऑन टू से दैट आई प्रे टू ऑल फेथ सो वंस अगेन दैट्स वेरी डिफरेंट फ्रॉम द लेफ्ट फॉर्मुलेशन और इवन द डी एम के फॉर्मुलेशन विच इज विच इज टू स्टे अवे फ्रॉम रिलीजन शी इज नॉट स्टेइंग अवे फ्रॉम रिलीजन शी इज सेंग बट आई विल ट्रीट आई विल गो टू ऑल रिलीजन आई विल नॉट मेक आई विल नॉट प्रिविलेज वन फेथ ओवर द अदर बिकॉज इन माई स्कीम ऑफ थिंग्स द स्टेट हैज नो फेथ नो दैट डन वॉट हैपन्स टू द कांग्रेस एंड द रेस्ट ऑफ दम कांग्रेस एन सी पी जे डी यू ऑल द रेस्ट ऑफ दम दे ऑल हैव एन इश्यू बिकॉज दे हैव टू नाउ फिगर आउट हाउ टू हाउ टू स्ट्रक्चर दियर ओन पॉलिटिक्स इज इट ऑल होपलेस फॉर दम विल आंसर दैट क्वेश्चन by coming to the first question by coming to the first point that we had mentioned to you that is the bjp fan club thinking that now it will be 303 will become 350 maybe 400 or if not 400 at least 350 because that's a done deal because everybody now is so happy that the temple has got built and also the way that the prime minister has been built the prime minister has has, has been seen all over the country his popularity his popularity is at its peak now there there we need some reality checks and that reality check is something that the opposition also is conscious of if they are not conscious of it then they are not doing their homework and that is something that you will find is in a story that a young colleague of mine amok prometra has done please see that story i will share a link with you i i'm i'm beginning by sharing the graphic that this story carries so look at this graphic this is a graphic of the map of india state wise map of india what are the numbers in these states telling you these are the numbers of lok sabha seats in each state that the bjp has not won in the last three elections last three elections one of which was under mr advani 2009 that the bjp lost but the next two elections bjp won by a majority 2019 by a much bigger sweep that was narendra modi's reelection even then these seats the bjp has never won how many how many seats do the do, do these add up to these add up to 200 seats which means in a house of 543 bjp does not contest in these 200 seats or has so far has not been in the contest which means bjp has to contest only in 343 seats of those 343 seats bjp won 303 the last time so maybe another 10 another 15 another 20 all of them right even if all of them it does not go to 350 so for bjp to go really to the numbers that mrs gandhi used to get indra gandhi used to get i'm not talking of rajiv gandhi's 414 for bjp to even get to get to that 350 340 50 kind of mark they will have to make a big impact in the 200 seats they've never got now look at this map of india and see the states and the seats that they've never got some are some are some are really not so important for example you can see that hindi heartland bjp more or less sweeps but in uttar pradesh three seats bjp is never won maybe maybe in the new scheme of things if the hindu vote consolidates even more they might win some more maybe more obcs vote for bjp or more dalits vote for bjp in these three states is seats i don't know again again in madhya pradesh one seat that is kamal nath's traditional seat which is son nakul nath won the last time that is chindwada again i don't know what will happen in chindwada now 
all bets are off because BJP has come to power with a large majority in Madhya Pradesh now. But if you see the rest of the country, you can see what challenges the BJP has. And, and this is what gives, what should give or what will give opposition some hope that look, first of all, we are not going to be, we are not going to, we are not going to be overrun by a BJP that gets 350, 360, 370, 400 in the manner that Congress party used to do in the past. So BJP at this point does not look like it has become the new Congress party of the old, right? Anything can happen in politics, but the fact is we can only go by the data that's available to us. So look at these 200 seats that the BJP has never won. Where are they? 81 of these seats are in the southern states. 81 of these seats are in Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Andhra. This could be a lot more if BJP, BJP had not done so brilliantly well in Karnataka, where they won 26 out of 28. Now Congress is in power in Karnataka. There will be some, some challenges, but 81 of the 200 seats are in the three states where BJP does not count for very much. That is Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Andhra Pradesh. Then you come to interesting seats because 47 of these seats remaining of the remaining seats, 47 fall in Maharashtra, Bihar and Punjab. What's interesting there is that these are the seats which Barring one of these seats, that is Barambati in, 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 in Maharashtra, where BJP put up a candidate, that is the Pawar family's traditional seat. In the remaining 46 seats, BJP was not in the fight the last time. BJP left these seats to its allies. That is in Maharashtra, Shiv Sena, in Bihar, JDU, in Punjab, is Shuromani Akali Dal. All three of them are not, not, not with the BJP. BJP might insist that the Shiv Sena is with them, but that's a Shinde Shiv Sena. Shiv Sena is split. We don't know as yet where will that vote go. So at the same time, BJP will think that they have a hope because last time these seats, which they, they have never won, they never even contested. They had left these seats to their allies. So this time, if they go up in these 46 seats, they might think that they have a chance. So that is another something that opens up. As I said, we are looking at the fallout and we are looking at what remains of the national politics because we are just a couple of weeks from elections being announced. For India to limit the BJP below 300, for India Alliance, to limit the BJP before 300, they have to have vote transfers and they have to have seat sharing that is efficient in Uttar Pradesh, in Bihar, and in Bihar, JDU has to keep its vote because the BJP would like to believe and BJP leaders tell us that the fact that JDU won so many seats in Bihar the last time or Shiv Sena won so, so many seats in Maharashtra the last time, that is misleading. They did not win those seats. They did not go, get those votes because Shiv Sena was, was so popular or because Nitish Kumar was so popular. They won those seats because that vote had come in the name of Narendra Modi. And this time, if they are not with the BJP, they are with the India Alliance. Don't take it for granted. They should not take it for, for granted that the vote will stay for them. The vote will come for Narendra Modi. So that, that game will be on. That's why it's very important for India block partners to make sure that they are Seat sharing, seat sharing is efficient and also that their vote transfer actually does take place. Uttar Pradesh, for example, the last time, the last time SP and BSP were in alliance in Uttar Pradesh. And between those two parties, vote transfers do take place. But what happened in that case? The BJP got fewer seats than they had got in 2014. So vote transfer did take place. And you can see that in many other seats, BJP had BJP faced much closer fights than was the case in 2014. But the fact is that even with vote transfers, the alliance of SP BSP was not able to win many seats. Why? Because a lot of the Dalits, particularly non-Jatav Dalits, walked across to the BJP and a lot of the OBC particularly non Yadav OBCs, but some Yadav, some, some Yadav OBCs also, also walked across to, to the BJP. Now for the, now for the Congress, RLD and SP, if that happens, for that alliance to make vote transfers take place will be that much of a challenge. Once again in Bihar, JDU, Nitish Kumar B will be under test. Chances are that Lalu, Tejashvi, their party, their, their family, they will retain their vote share. The Muslim vote will go in any case with this alliance. But does 
Does Nitish Kumar manage to hold its, his vote together or JDU's vote together? That's an open question. The BJP would like to believe that, that that will not happen. The other thing that the BJP would be watching very carefully. Again, as we look at the scenario the day after, another thing the BJP will be looking at very carefully will be the ex-allies. Ex-allies are JDU, Shiv Sena and the Akalis. In each case, the equation is different. With JDU, BJP would like to believe that, look, Lok Sabha election, voters will come to Narendra Modi because they had voted for Nitish in Modi's name. So in this case, Nitish Kumar will get his comeuppance. And as this vote shifts to BJP, Modi's vote, which had gone to JDU, which they believe had gone to JDU in Modi's name, it comes when it comes back to Modi and BJP, that will then give Nitish Kumar his comeuppance and that will lead to the fall of the Bihar government. That's what BJP would be looking at. Of course, the India Alliance partners will be hoping that their vote stays together and that Nitish is able to deliver because that's their only hope. Unless they get more seats in Bihar, Maharashtra, Karnataka, Odisha and West Bengal. They cannot keep the BJP below 272. Right now, their best case scenario their target can only be to keep the BJP below 272 or maybe make it fall short by 20, 30 seats. That's what they can try for. They cannot try for defeating the BJP because that's where another issue comes in. And that issue is something that we've spoken about in the past, that in 224 seats in the last election, 224 in the last Lok Sabha election, BJP got more than 50% of the vote. 50% is the holy grail of, of voting percentages in a, in, the, in a first past the post system. Those 224 seats, BJP would still look unassailable because those seats also happen to fall in Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Gujarat, Uttar Pradesh, and some in Karnataka, a few in Maharashtra as well. So that is where the BJP is very strong. So 224, the other part of it, again, again, it will worry the BJP to some extent or maybe it will maybe it'll make BJP a bit more realistic, but it will also enthuse the opposition, which is that of the remaining, if BJP won 224 seats by more than 50% vote, in the remaining 319 seats in the country, BJP only won 79. 319 minus 79, we come close to that figure of 200. Those are the seats that the BJP has never won. And many of those seats fall in Kerala, in Tamil Nadu. Now you know why the Prime Minister has been making so many visits to those southern states. Because he knows that even if he does not win seats this time, he is now strengthening the foundations of his party in those states because after 2024 they'll be 2029 as well and also he sees he sees that family run parties dmk for example family run parties weaken generation to generation generally by the third generation they are much weaker than they were in the times of the founder and that's what he's looking at in tamil nadu in kerala what he's looking at is that look UDF and LDF, they've shared power, they're shared in the sense that it's, they've usually alternated also, the, although, although the last time LDF bucked that trend, they usually alternate and there's, there's a time when people will begin to see, be, begin to look for change. And if we can take some of the Christian vote again, away from the Congress party, that will weaken that alliance. And as that alliance weakens and BJP is beginning to get some vote, in fact, all estimates tell us that BJP's vote share in Kerala is always already 17-18%. As that rises, two things will happen. The first thing that will happen is Congress will weaken. And that's very important. And that calculation, BJP will never give up because, because the BJP's main objective is to weaken the Congress so much that it disappears because it knows that whatever happens, it's real challenge in Indian politics, national politics can only come from the Congress party because no matter what happens, 2014, 2019, Congress party still got about 20% of the vote. So one out of five Indians just vote for the symbol, the hand. So Congress got 44 seats in 2014, 52 seats in 2019, still got the same about 20% of the vote. So BJP has to destroy the Congress party. They also know that of the 52 seats that the Congress party won the last time, 19, one nine, as many as 19 came from Kerala, 19 out of 
20 Congress party swept that state. So if BJP can get some of the vote to shift from the Congress, see the Christian vote to shift from Congress and some of the upper caste Hindu vote to come to the BJP, that will weaken the Congress party. So if Congress party again goes down instead of going up, that will be a net gain for the BJP. That's how this, that's how this game is being played out. The other thing that the BJP will, will think about is that in 2019, it had given 94 seats to its allies to contest. Today, it does not have that many allies. So it will be contesting a lot more seats than it did the last time, which might give it, which might give it the possibility of getting a few more seats. At the same time, at the same time, the opposition will think that these were not the BJP seats. These were the allies seats. And in some cases, the allies are now with the opposition. And that makes a difference. Of course, there, there is a state like Punjab. That's a third, third former ally who's broken away, who I didn't mention earlier, because that's a, that's a very different case. Because that's that's not a case where BJP can vote into Akali Dal's voter base right now. Because in Punjab, BJP is not very popular, and BJP will struggle to win anything in Punjab without a partnership with the Akali Dal. I will conclude this by showing you the same map again. See, these are the seats the BJP has never won. But also remember a few things. Now, BJP did very poorly in the South the last time, but in the past, they won the odd seat in the South. For example, in 2014, they won Kanyakumari in Tamil Nadu. 2019, they won two seats in Andhra Pradesh, Narsapuram and Vizag. Now, in that case, in Andhra Pradesh, they were in, they were in partnership with TDP. Now, it looks like TDP is very keen on a partnership. We mentioned it to you that Chandrababu Naidu came for the temple consecration. And it seems, it's quite evident that he is desperate for a partnership with the BJP. Will that happen or not? We don't know. But if BJP is able to strike that partnership, and if BJP is able to once again reestablish its presence, particularly in the southernmost areas, parts of Tamil Nadu, by the way, that's where the Prime Minister has also been traveling, then it might get the odd seat from there as well. So once again, the fight right now is about this 200 plus seats. That is how, that is how this fascinating battle of 2024 will open out. And that is how the scene looks a day after the consecration of the temple in Ayodhya.